At Art of One Dojo, we like to take a look at a lot of different martial arts. Not just their history, but often in the way that their practice and teaching is approached. Now, Wing Chun is an art with a rich past and a diverse and sometimes divided community. So instead of doing just a single history episode, we are choosing to look at Wing Chun through different perspectives of practitioners in the hopes that, little by little, we can explore what the art has in common and leave all the politics outside. Today's guest is Sifu Bender, the founder of San Jose Wing Chun and the director of Bay Area Wing Chun Students Association. He founded the association in 1968, but his journey into the art began in 1958 when he started training in Hong Kong. Sifu Bender gives us his rich history beginning at Yip Man School and having Bruce Lee as a classmate, and he provides a valuable perspective taking the authentic teachings of Wing Chun and spending a lifetime teaching and adapting the art for his students. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your background? How did you get started with Wing Chun and who did you start training with? When I was a teenager at the time, I went to a Catholic high school, which is uh, St. Francis Xavier College in Hong, Hong Kong, Kowloon, 1956. And then like uh, about 1958 at that time, all, a lot of my friends you know, are very uh, interested in martial art. And the, first, uh, the group of friends I hang around mostly our Wing Chun guys, and then Bruce Lee, you know, on uh, uh, on the same school too. In 1958, my friend uh, went to Yip Man School in uh, Kowloon, uh, the the Lei Chiang you know, that that area to uh, to start. Uh, th that was the December of 1958. I start over there. Okay, and. Uh, during that time, you know, the, I think the school fee was uh, $15 a month, okay? As a matter of fact, Yip Man never taught, taught that much, you know. We just paid the school fee and then, uh, you know, some of the seeing and then show us, you know, what to do and you know, things like that. After the class, you know, you know, they all come to my house and then, you know, start, you know, you know work out, work out uh, on ourselves, you know. I only, I don't only train about, what, three months. That's why I never... I never dare to consider Yip Man is my real, real teacher. Okay, even though I pay him, you know, to me the name does, does not mean anything. Who you really learn from is the real thing. Okay, so you know I don't care. A lot of people never learn from him, and I say, hey, he's my sifu like that. You know, I'm not that type of uh, guy. You know, I, I left Hong Kong about about April. Yeah, April of 1959, and you know, like uh, Bruce Lee that time. And then he, you know, he used to be my, uh, you know, my uh, schoolmate, you know, in Hong Kong. So, you know, like a lot of time, you know, after school, you know, a lot of my friends came to my house. One, one day, uh, Bruce Lee came to my house and then uh, he told me that, hey, you know, uh, hey, Ben, you know, I'm, I'm going to Hong, I'm going to USA uh, uh, pretty soon. I said, really? I, I get approved to USA too, you know. So both both of us are very happy to find out that we all go to USA, and then we exchange address, and we also so excited. We came, you know, we are we we went we we are going to San Francisco, and then we exchanged the address, and he 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 stay in the same address, the same street with me, in San Francisco. So you know, we both are very, very excited. And then he, he arrived later than I was because I took the plane, he took the boat, okay? So you know, like uh, when he, he and I get together that time, uh, he, he took me to his uh, uh, place uh, and then he showed me the, you know, the Wing Chun. And then in, in Hong Kong, he was showing me some of the Wing Chun too, you know, in, and dancing, you know, that kind of thing. And then um, my, my father, he was in uh, Temple Florida. And then he wants me to uh, to go over there with him. I could go school over there. Then I uh, I I took the uh, the train to Temple Florida. And then like uh, from then on, I lost contact with Bruce Lee in Temple Florida. That time, there were nobody doing any martial art. All they do is karate. Okay, so I went high school in there, and then like. Uh, I have no friend and uh, you know no no nobody to talk to. I was so boring. But every more every day I spend time on the on the laundry, my the the small business. 
in the laundry room, I, I practice myself, you know, with the first set and things like that. And then the strip punch and, and, and all those, so whatever I know, okay. And then my, uh, by 1961, you know, that means two years later, um, I, I flew back to San Francisco. And I go to uh, City, Co City College that time. I met somebody who was in Meng Chun too. And then like, accidentally, you know, we are fooling around on the cafeteria, you know, try to grab something. And then I noticed, hey, you know, I could do this. And then he, he do the same thing. We both so happy, you know. And then we start, you know, doing the, uh, the Wing Chun together. I met another friend who is from uh, St. Francis uh, College, you know, to San Francisco too. And then he was, and he was in Meng Chun too. I, I start asking, hey, you know, where, where did you learn from? Well, how do you know this? Saying, oh, I learned from, uh, I learned from, learned from uh, the guy in the main store in, in the basement. He, he's doing Wing Chun. I said, really? So I went down to, uh, went down to the, the, to the basement on the main store, the bakery area. And then uh, his name is uh, Felix Ho. So uh, both him and I are so happy, you know, to get together. So from then on, we both, uh, you know, uh, work out in the, in the basement, you know. And then after a while, you know, we are, we are hit, you know, killing each other, you know. I mean, sparring and all these things, you know, when you're young, right? Then I, until 1968, one of my buddies introduced me a guy called Kenneth Chung. Kenneth Chung, you know, he's from, just came from Hong Kong. And then he used to, he told me that he, he was uh, in Leung Seung lineage. Leung Seung is the, was the number one student of Yip Man. He's the top, top student of Yip Man. He learned from Leung Seung directly. So, you know, like uh, when he came, when, when the Kenneth Chung met me the second day, okay, so I, 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 I brought him to, to see the Wing Chun friend and this and that, you know. So uh, right away, you know, Ken asked me, hey, Ben, how about let's do something? So I do the chi sao with him, you know. And then uh, when I did, I tried my best. I cannot do anything. He was uh, throwing me back, you know, like a yo-yo, okay. So, you know, like uh, I said, well, you know, that's it, you know. So I'm gonna I'm gonna learn from you, but in the same time I I brought about three or four guys have an instant class for for him in uh, my uh, in my in my garage. So from then on you know, until you know like uh, all the way you know until 1973, and then um, you know Sifu Ken went to Hong Kong, and then hey Ben, why don't you take over my place? You know when I'm going to Hong Kong, so I took over San Jose. And then I, from then on, you know, every time when he, when he come back from uh, uh, Hong Kong to San Jose, we always get together, you know, visit uh, to work out Wing Chun, you know, whatever he, he, he know what he uh, uh, experienced, he show it to me until, you know, until today, we still get together all the time. And today uh, I am 81. I am 81 year old, I'm still, you know, training people and still work out. I, you know, that, that's the, uh, my whole story about the Wing Chun, okay? So we live in a time where there's a lot of different lineages of Wing Chun, and sometimes people try to argue that one is better than another. Is lineage important, and how can a student educate themselves on choosing one over the other? I mean, at beginning, the, 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 at beginning when, when a group of people learn from Yip Man, you may have still have a hard time because uh, you know Wing Chun style. You know a lot of people are not, you know, don't have the patience, and Wing Chun is very boring, very painful at beginning. So you know, like people, a lot of people quit, and then Leung Xiong always, you know, keep on maintain, you know, try to find people to maintain the Wing Chun system, get it, uh, carry on, you know. After Leung Seung, <clears throat> you know, like, uh, uh, learned from Yip Man about seven years, I think. And then he, Leung Seung and uh, his buddy Lok Yu, you know, his number one, number two student of Yip Man, you know. After so many years, they start go outside to teach. And then uh, a, bunch, a bunch of people learned from uh, Yip Man that time. 
So you know that's why you know like uh, it's afterward you know will be have so many so called lineage you know you know people learn from Yip Man, but uh, of course you know Yip Man have so many many students you know you know I don't I I think he only have a handful of among of student that he consider you know is very uh is suitable to teach you know it's good enough to teach. But afterward, everybody know a little bit, you know, everybody claim, oh, I learned from learn, uh, Yip Man, you know, one or two years, they start teaching about, because of, you know, the popularity of the market. Everybody start teaching Wing Chun now, you know, in, uh, you know, China, in Hong Kong, everywhere, even, you know, even in America, there are so many people teach Wing Chun. The main thing, you know, Yip Man really teach, you know, the old tra uh, tradition way, you know, they don't, they, they don't only show the top student, you know, what to do and things like that. You know, for the young kid, they don't even care. But uh, I think Wing Chun, most important, you know, is the knowledge. And the secondly is how dedicated you are. You have to be 100, you know, you know percent, you know, you could eat the bitter, then you get the sweetness. That means you have to really train hard, you know, I mean, regardless who teach you. If you don't train, of course, you know, when somebody train you, the person have, they must have the, the, the knowledge. The guy have to be know what he doing, not know the Wing Chun concept, know the Wing Chun skill. And he is uh, very honest to show you whatever he know. If the guy is not honest, he still don't learn anything, okay? Even though he's good. Or even martial art, not talking about just Wing Chun. You find a real good martial art, you know, teacher, and he show you the proper way, the correct way. Plus, you work hard all the way. You will be success. Otherwise, you know, if the guy don't have knowledge, and then even he show you everything, you're still learning a lot of garbage. Like you said, there are many lineage in there, you know, because of uh, you know they want to be uh make a living. They want to be uh marketing this, marketing marketing that. You know, everybody have different purposes. Some some people just emphasize on oh, MMA, I want to learn Wing Chun, I want to use Wing Chun a little bit, and use MMA and then to make a living. So many lineage is all, they have their own own uh, opinion. They have their own uh, own goal. Oh, some some people, oh, my, own, my goal is to make a lot of money. I don't care you learn or not. Or oh, oh, my goal is to make you to be become a champion, a MMA, whatever. You know, I mean, all, all different ways. I, I, don't, I don't teach people to, to, uh, uh, to make a, a career out of it. I want that my own goal. I want make people to be, you know, dedicate, you know, to, to feel, uh, to, you know, concentrate on the tradition way and then to, to have a good, good way of life. One thing Wing Chun is about, you know, it's good for, you know, like, uh, it's, it's good for health. And also Wing Chun is good for the thinking too. You know, people, you know, to make people alert, you know, about not just physically, to alert into your mind, you know. So you you understand that the Wing Chun, you know, it's not just helping you physically, it's helping you mentally too. How do you treat people? So you said uh, in the previous interview that when it comes to Wing Chun, uh, simplicity is the key to brilliance. What does that mean? In Wing Chun, you know, all the movement we are doing, we eliminate all the fancy stuff. So, you know, like uh, the whole thing is Wing Chun, we have only have three sets, very simple, very direct. And, and all the Wing Chun movement is very uh, logical. You know, I mean, I would say it's very scientific. You know, you know, that's why, you know, Wing Chun, we do not emphasize on brutal forces. You know, um, we don't we don't emphasize on weightlifting and all those things. You know, we want we want to be relaxed. You know, Wing Chun. We always tell people Wing Chun was invented by a woman. A woman's physical size. There's no way they are big as as the guy. So that means in order for them to survive in fighting, they must be have a very relaxed, very good in position. You know, the accuracy. The position and simple for real fight. There's no way you could fight the guy half hour with you know with, with non stopping. Two minutes is is too is a lot already. You know, 
So that means you, know, you got to be fast and quick and, you know, simple. You cannot be, you know, like jumping around and like all those uh, wushu things, you know, I mean, looks so beautiful. Wing Chun never, never designed to show on the public. We don't have much of a uh, uh, performance, you know, on the, on the, on the stage. Because uh, when we do the first set performance, all the martial art people, people, they will laugh at you. Can you, how can you fight like this? You know, they don't, they don't realize that, you know, because the first set we're doing, nothing but stand, stand, stand still, the hand move, but that, that's all. So, you know, like Wing Chun, we never design on to show people. We design to use it. That's it. That's why, you know, everything is so simple and direct. Uh, can you tell us the importance of core structure and functional energy? Yeah, yeah, the structure. We have uh, the, 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 the stance. The way we are doing it, we always em emphasize on the center line. From here all the way down. When we want to attack, it's the guy's center line. And we also want to protect our own center line. Number two, you know, we we would not struggling with the person's energy. When the guy use a lot of force on me, I don't want to be blocking him so heavy, you know. I want to delete him, you know. But of course, you know, talking is easy. You know, doing it is hard, okay? But that's why Wing Chun, we have Qi Sao. Qi Sao, you know, is the, the kind of training, you know, is two person to work on our, our, our sensitivity and position. The Qi Sao is similar to the Tai Chi, okay? Tai Chi have pushing hand, but Qi Sao, the way we are doing it, we are, we, we are like doing the defense and attacking at the same time. At the beginning, we want to get the position, build up the endurance, and build up the, you know, the coordination of the, 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 the whole body. It's not just the upper energy. You know, 90% of the American people are upper heavy. But, uh, you know, in Wing Chun, we want to be balanced, the whole body. The Sifu have to be able to, you know, spend X amount of time with the student by the hand and by you know, working out together with, you know, with technique. It's not just like, you know, killing yourself with no, 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 uh, no structure in there. Are there any ideas or principles in Wing Chun that work with other martial arts? So if someone has experience in a different art, what kind of compatibility is there with Wing Chun? Okay, uh, you know, like, um, as far as I know, you know, like, uh, the people in the other martial arts, you know, they, you know, they, uh, they, they want to uh, combine with Wing Chun, you know. That might help them a, a little bit on, on the uh, fighting experience. You know, for my, my opinion, when when you when you're in different style so many years, suddenly you come to learn this style. You may find yourself a lot of movement are contra contradict to each other, so uh, might not be benefit to you when you're in a critical movement that time. You know, sparring and then very normally you go back to your old 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 habit. It's good idea to know a little bit. You know, I mean, depends on how what the person want. Okay. I, you know, even though I do not learn karate or do not learn uh, uh, um, uh, Muay Thai or whatever, you know, I still open up my eye. What is their favorite? What is, you know, what is the style to, to learn? What is the major thing? What is their specialty? And uh, how, 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 are, how are they doing to keep myself an uh, open mind about what other style would do? You know what I mean? What is the five element theory and how is it used in practice? Well, the five element is, uh, you know, in Wing Chun is, you know, my head, is, my head has to be up. When I fight with you, I will not put my head down, you know, like, like those uh, uh, boxing. They, they do this, like this, you know, we don't do that. We want to be head up. My eye to look at your eye. I don't look at your my eye. Do not look at your your hand. Do not look at your 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 kicking. I focus to your eye eye contact because when I look at your eye, I could tell your whole body's vision. Okay. Number two, 
lower down my, my stance. You know, that means I will not be used upper energy. I lower down my stand and I squeeze my knee. Lower down my stand is the number two. Number three, I squeeze my knee. You know, squeeze my knee is, we call Kim Sat. When we squeeze the knee, that means I build up my knee energy. You know, because this, the knee energy, when Chun, we emphasize on the wrist, wrist energy, the elbow energy, and the knee energy. Okay, we don't we don't use the uh, the head butt that kind of thing. Okay, the uh, power come from the ground, come from the ground. That means the power come from the knee. Stand up, and then coming out from my hand to give it out. You know that kind of thing. It's not from my shoulder. Wing Chun, we are not using the shoulder energy. And then elbows in. We that means elbow in. That means we do not punch people. This way. Not this way. We don't punch this way. You know, when, when I do the punch this time to the center, that means I'm blocking all your sen your your movement coming to my center already. Because I punch, I, I go to the center like this. So that means whatever your punch come to me, my elbow is, is blocking half of your movement already. Okay, this is the five elements. That's my jang. My jang is elbow in. Kim shut, that means I squeeze my knee. Lock ma, that means I lower down my horse. Tang tao, that means my head's up. Teng yu, teng yu, that means you know, my back straight. I will not be leaning. I will not be backward like that. To, to make your whole body, the posture correctly. That's very important. So can you tell us a little bit about your school how do you find a balance in preserving the core principles while teaching the student to adapt the art for themselves? A lot, whatever, the way I do, you know, my school is like this. I am very honest to, the, to my student. I'm, I open up for all kinds of questions. Even I emphasize to people to ask me questions about anything, martial art, you know, anything about martial art, Wing Chun, movement, whatever i will tell them you know why we do this why we don't do this and then i would give them the example and prove it to them you know suppose oh why i do this you know because i because i say so i don't say that because i say that and i i'm gonna prove it to you some people say i tell you to do this because i say so why no why not you don't trust me they yell at the guy <laughs> you know to me it's not like that I tell them why, because of this. Now your son Francis is a Sifu as well, correct? Can you tell yes. us about his teaching and how is he carrying the art forward with his own influence? My family uh, rule, all my kids, they must learn Wing Chun regardless they like it or not. <laughs> when they are 12 years old, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you know, I want to make them become more, uh, you know, not afraid, not you know, easily intimidated by other people. You know, and uh, Francis, uh, you know, is the person you know really trained a lot. You know, and he work out with a lot of uh, in in the, in the in the class, and also Francis, uh, he have a lot of patience. You know, he he I think he have a lot of patience, and he explained really well. So he he could carry on uh, the the my Wing Chun pretty good. What is your advice for somebody who's just starting Wing Chun? What are the first and most important things that they should focus on? The first, uh, the people first learning Chun, I want them, want them to focus on the body relax. But the, to me, Wing Chun is more, is very internally, not like other style, the, a lot of brutal forces, you know, we relax and we, we, we want to be you know, humble. So what do you hope for the future of Wing Chun? Are there any changes or adaptations that you would like to see in the future? I hope everything will carry on Leung Xiong way to make the person to become Wing Chun, the movement become more effective. But in uh, uh, Jeep Man's place, the only do is on the Qi Sao movement, they start hitting each other, that's it. But Leung Xiong have a, a system to train people how to apply on the Wing Chun movement, adapted correctly into effectively.
So I just want to thank you so much for your time today and, and giving us a look at your history in Wing Chun and, and the way you teach it and the important aspects of it and giving some, such great advice for all those out there who are looking at the art and who want to start. So thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Yeah, and also want to let you uh, want to let you know too. A lot of people look for the want to look for the, the to learn martial art to look for the teacher. Do not just you know blindly go to the uh, uh, to the internet and go to the the, the marketing you know, to to look for the name. But uh, would be the best go to to search you know the person's background, and then to go to the school to see how the teacher teach. The teacher have to have to not, number one, the, the final, the teacher have a lot of knowledge. Number two, the teacher is willing to teach, honestly. It's not just for the money. It's very important. And also the teacher is spend the time on the student, willing to, you know, to answer, you know, all kind of uh, questions. All right, excellent advice, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. A great big thank you to Sifu Bender for spending his time with us to give us a glimpse into his world of Wing Chun training. Also an extended thank you to Francis Durr, Mark Leong, and Rain for their help in providing footage and making this episode happen. And there's so much more to explore with this art, and it's interesting to see the different points of views that we can appreciate without all the toxic debate that we often find in the martial arts. So we'd like to continue down this road of hearing from different teachers in the art, so please let us know, you know what you think down in the comments, any questions, thoughts, or experiences that you have to share. Please keep the discussion civil. We're all about growing, not trolling. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.